Hey, what's up guys? Joker here and welcome to my launch day review for the AMD Radeon 7 graphics card. We're going to be taking a look at this new card today from AMD and the Radeon Technologies Group and comparing it directly head to head with its main competition from NVIDIA, that being the GeForce RTX 2080. They're both selling around the same price. They both technically have an MSRP of $699, although it's been very difficult to find 2080s at that price. And we'll just have to wait and see once Radeon 7 actually starts selling what the prices will be, and of course the availability and everything that kind of comes along with that. And we'll also be comparing it up against the GTX 1080 Ti, which is a card which has reached its end of life. However, it really hangs in there neck and neck with these cards, and a very good case could be made for the 1080 Ti and possibly picking up one on the used market if you are looking to get this level of performance but maybe don't want to spend six or seven hundred dollars and want to save a few bucks. But first, a quick thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace is the perfect place to host your domain, website, or online store. So I'm not going to bore you guys too much with specs and everything like that because we've already talked about that in previous videos. You've seen other channels explaining what these cards are. You all know they've got 16 gigabytes of HBM2, which is more than what the NVIDIA cards can offer. It's got a base clock of 1400 megahertz and a boost clock of 1750 megahertz. And it was able to maintain that 1750 megahertz during my testing. I was even able to see it boot up to 1801 megahertz if I did bump up the power limit slider in Wattman. Now, usually you guys know I love to show side-by-side -side gameplay comparisons, and I will be doing that for this video as well as in a follow-up video, I'm going to be doing just raw benchmark footage of all of the games that I tested, the 10 games that I did test on these three graphics cards. So you're still going to see side-by-side -side comparisons. However, there's something I do want to mention about uh, Afterburner and other, other third-party software and its compatibility at this time with the AMD Radeon 7. So they are not being supported right now. It's expected to come just a few days after these cards are actually released, which is somewhat normal when it comes to the AMD cards. And as a result of that, when it comes to the afterburner overlay, if you look at it, you'll see that it's not showing the frequency of the GPU core or the memory, and it's also not showing real-time temperatures. So for the side-by-side -side comparisons, you're not gonna get the full picture, but you guys can at least see things like frame rates, GPU utilization, as well as frame times, which are really the most important things when it comes to gaming performance. For all of you guys that want to get into the nitty gritty of comparing clock speeds and all of that stuff, um, we'll have to do a future video with that once Afterburner and other software do get their updates to actually support Radeon 7 for overlays. But I did run a test loop at the desktop with the F1 2018 benchmark. I let that go ahead and run on a loop at max settings, and I just went ahead and monitored it within Wattman, which is the only software we can currently use to be able to see real-time frequencies, temperatures, all that good stuff. So if you look on here, you'll see with the F1 2018 benchmark running, and this had been running for about 45 minutes at this point because I wanted to really burn it in and see how high we can get the temperature on this. This is just running completely stock settings, um, and you could see the core frequency is hovering anywhere around 16, uh, sorry, 1700 to 1750-ish megahertz, it'll even get up to like 1770 at times, 1780, but for the most part, you're staying right around that 1750 megahertz boost clock, which is advertised, which is good. It's not really running below that, except for maybe a few little bits here and there, and if you do bump up the power limit slider, it will keep you over 1750 and even get you to around 1801 um, in some games, not all games. F1 2018 wasn't one of them, and the temperature-wise, you can see that it is running at 75 degrees, six, uh, 75 degrees Celsius, Again, though, this was after a 45-minute run, and yeah, it's running the game completely maxed out and everything like that, and the fans, those are all on the default fan curve, and you can see they're running at 3,000 RPMs, which I can tell you does get fairly bit a fair bit loud um, when you are using the system. Of course, once again, once we get Afterburner and other programs, we'll be able to do more things like tweaking fan curves and really getting everything dialed in the way that we want it. But at least we've got that information to go on, so you guys can be assured that during any side-by-side -side test you might see during the course of this video, that even though you're not seeing real-time stats for frequency and temperatures, you could expect the card to run up to anywhere between 65 and 75 C, depending on you know how long the game or the benchmark has been running, and then frequency should stay around that 1750 to 1800 megahertz range on the core. So doing what it's advertised to do, I just won't be able to really display it in real-time for you guys 
in side-by-side -side comparisons. Now, as far as the test setup that I was using, and this is the last thing we got to go over before we actually look at the benchmarks, I was running on an Intel i7-8700K overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz. I've also had 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory in that system at 3200 megahertz. All the games were running off of a dedicated SSD and recording to a separate drive, so nothing getting in the way of there. The AMD driver is a press driver. It doesn't have like an actual number that you can compare it to ones out there because it's not a public driver. It's completely a press driver. And for the NVIDIA drivers, it was 418.81, the latest one from them. All of the cards were tested at their stock clock speeds, but I did increase the power limit slider for the Radeon 7 that does go all the way up to as high as 120%. And then for the 1080 Ti and the RTX 2080, I also did increase their power limit sliders as well as far as they would go in order to be able to maintain the best, highest clock speeds and boost right out of the box. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the gaming benchmarks. We'll start off here with 1080p, the average FPS. Of course, I did test at 1440p as well as 4K, and we'll have the 1% lows for all of the different resolutions here. But we'll start off with 1080p and the average FPS with the three graphics cards I mentioned, Radeon 7, RTX 2080, and the GTX 1080 Ti. And after going over all these numbers, if you're just concerned about the highest frame rate possible in the most games across here, the clear winner is the RTX 2080, bottom line. Uh, the 2080 and the Radeon 7 do tie in like one game, and but for the most part, um, the RTX 2080 is winning. The only games where the Radeon 7 showed a clear and distinct advantage on at all resolutions was the Division, Battlefield 5 as well as Strange Brigade, which I guess could be expected, certainly with Strange Brigade, that game is super well optimized for AMD in DX12, and it shows as the frame rate is like almost off the charts by comparison to what the NVIDIA numbers are. But yeah, for the most part here across the board here, you're seeing victories from the RTX 2080. There were like some, there were some weird ones that kind of stuck out where like the, the 1080 Ti was doing even better than the 2080, like on the Division in DX12, the 1080 Ti actually ran it better but for the most part here you're going to see victories with the rtx 2080 um but prices on those are more up around like 800 and we don't know about rating on 7 yet we don't know if it's going to sell for 700 at launch we don't know what the availability availability will be on that price when it comes to gtx 1080 ti's you can definitely find them out there for under 600 dollars i'm going to go over that during the conclusion of the video. Taking a look at the 1% lows for 1080p, not a whole lot is changing here. Pretty much the cards are all staying ex at exactly where you would expect them to be. And all of these cards are able to maintain 60 frames per second at 1080p. They're very good for 1080p. Although I think 1440p is probably going to be the sweet spot for you know these cards and this price point and I think that's really where you're going to see the most benefit unless you really wanted to play you know games like Rainbow Six Siege or Overwatch at like a locked 240 FPS on a ultra high refresh rate monitor um, there'll be a few use cases where you might find that good but for the most part I think 1440p is going to be perfect for any of these three cards while 4k is maybe just a little bit further out of reach because you can see at 1440 um, every game here, these cards are averaging over 60 frames per second. When it does cut, come to the 1% lows, we do have some cards, you know, dropping down a, a bit more than others. We see Assassin's Creed Odyssey in the division, there's 1% lows down below 60 frames per second. But for the most part, we're doing very, very well here across on all these cards at 1440p. 4K is going to be pretty brutal, um, especially when you're considering the fact that I was benchmarking at ultra settings. There's only a few either optimized or less demanding games where you're going to be able to average 60 frames per second upward. Games like Forza Horizon 4, Strange Brigade, Wolfenstein 2, Rainbow Six Siege, things like those. You'll be absolutely fine at 4K ultra settings, but anything else you know, that's demanding, you're going to probably have to lower down settings to at least high to get 60 FPS, which is why I say that 1440p is really the perfect place for any of these cards here. And then 4K on the 1% lows, you can see that really kind of drives it home that um, these cards are going to struggle quite a bit when it does come to trying to maintain a solid 60 frames per second at 4K. And one final shout out to Squarespace, who are fantastic if you want to set up your very own website or host an e-commerce page for an online shop. They've got tons of easy to use and fully customizable templates to choose from for beginners all the way up to advanced users. So head over to squarespace.com slash jokerproductions with the link down in the description below and you'll get 10% off of your first purchase with Squarespace. Okay, so final thoughts after taking a look at all of the numbers here, you know, the RTX 2080 and the Radeon 7, they are really neck and neck. Now, no doubt the 
RTX 2080 did win in more games there. Um, you know, some games with DX12 and Vulkan optimizations maybe will support, um, you know, AM the AMD card a little bit better, but they're really, really neck and neck, the RTX 2080 and the Radeon 7. I really don't feel like you can kind of go wrong with either one of them. It's just going to depend on what the price is when you're actually sitting down and trying to purchase one of these cards and whether or not either one of them is available. Now, RTX 2080s are read readily available, although the ones at $699 are not as much and they're usually aftermarket cards. Their founder's card, like the one I tested here today, you know, those sell for $800. The Radeon 7 is supposed to sell for $100 less than that. And you also have to factor in that the Radeon 7 is actually giving a $180 game bundle with some pretty killer games, Resident Evil 2, The Division 2, and Devil May Cry 5. So that's three AAA titles that's getting bundled along with the $700 card. So that's a really good value right there, especially if you were planning to pick up even, even two out of the three games there. That's a very compelling reason why you might want to consider the Radeon 7. Obviously, when it comes to FreeSync monitors now with NVIDIA supporting them, that's that argument is maybe a little bit of a wash, although it's going to be iffy when, you know, which monitors are going to be supported by the NVIDIA card taking advantage of adaptive sync. And then at the end of this, you've also got the 1080 Ti, which is about 5 to 10 FPS slower than both the 2080 and the Radeon 7. However, if you come over to eBay, you can find, I'm looking at sold listings here. You can see here's a 1080 Ti that just sold on February 6th. That's today. It sold today. A brand new GTX 1080 Ti for $389. And that wasn't even at auction. That was just a straight up buy it now. Um, you know, you can see other listings on here going for like $395. Some are up around like $600, which is crazy. Um, $395, you know. The point is you can, you can find them for less than what the other cards are. You're going to find them easily for $600 and lower. You might even find them for as cheap as $400 if you get lucky and you're willing to be a little bit patient when it does come to eBay and you're willing to take a chance on a used card. You can't really find new 1080 Ti's anymore. If you do, they're like $1,000 because they've reached end of life. And chances are, if you're going for a very specific model, there's a reason you want that specific model, probably for SLI or something. So yeah, that's definitely something to consider with the 1080 Ti. Obviously, if you're already run it, running one of them, there's no reason to upgrade to either one of these cards. If you're going to upgrade, if you feel the need to, then I would say go 2080 Ti. That's really the only logical upgrade path from a 1080 Ti at right now at this point in time, if you really feel like you absolutely need to. But for the Radeon 7 and the RTX 2080, it's going to be a bit of a toss up and which one is going to suit your needs better if, you know, you really do fall into a category of someone that wants to use it for content creation and you know that there's a, so a piece of software you use like um, Maya or uh, Adobe Premiere or something like that that will actually leverage um, the Radeon 7 card better than an NVIDIA card, then that's something worth considering. But we're talking about gaming performance in this video and they're both pretty much tied you know for the most part and it's, it's just like within margin of error there the frame rate differences so it's a bit of a toss-up but i do look forward to your feedback and opinions down in the comments below if you're purchasing right now which would you get the radeon 7 or the rtx 2080 but i'm gonna go ahead and get on out of here guys i do look forward to your thoughts and everything down in the comments below be on the lookout in either later today or tomorrow i'm going to be putting out all the benchmark footage um for the 1440p benchmarks and then we'll do a later one with maybe 4k or 1080p let me know which one you prefer for another side-by-side -side video, um, but that'll be after the Afterburner update, and we can actually see the frequencies, temperatures, and all that stuff. So I'm going to get out of here, and uh, if you enjoyed this video, leave a thumbs up on it down below. Subscribe if you're not already, and I will catch you guys tomorrow for another video. Ta-ra.